Well, it's finally happened. Someone's combined Brutal Doom with Minecraft, expectedly named Brutal Minecraft. Developed by a guy named Doom Forever 7 z Yeah, that's his actual username. Now, to show my age a bit here, I actually remember playing Minecraft way back when it first came out. Back when you paid notch 10 or so of your hard-earned dollar dues to download an executable with the most current working version. Since then, it's become a bit of a worldwide phenomenon, earning its creator a mansion fit for a movie star and becoming the bane of every parent and older sister around the world. Now, I wouldn't say that I hate Minecraft, but I can say that I do hate Minecraft-themed YouTube channels. I mean, I get that the AdSense money is appealing, but I'd rather stand on the side of the highway and let passing drivers throw pineapples up my ass than stoop to that level. So truthfully, this is the first time I've played anything Minecraft related since, well, I guess the first time I ever played it, which has got to be going on over 10 years now at least. But the question is, what is Brutal Minecraft? Well, I'm so glad you asked. It's something of a total conversion for Doom 2 that carries across the look and feel of the original game, offering up a bunch of environments to explore, nine in total, along with all these weapons and enemies carried across. You've got lots of zombies, there's skeletons armed with bows, and then there's creepers. My god, the creepers. But we'll talk about these exploding assholes later on. Holy shit! It's all actually kind of challenging, and even on the normal difficulty setting, there's a few parts in there that are really going to require a bit of skill to get past. Brutal Minecraft's got a bit of an open-ended feel to the whole thing too. Now, when the mod starts, you're inside your house and then you set off on your journey and get down to business, killing everything that moves. Right off the bat though, you get a sense of freedom that the mod offers and you can move back and forth between all of the current maps as you please. There's a fair bit of variety to all of them too. You'll see cities, caves, dungeons, abandoned fortresses, and I guess hell. Then something like this area here, which is just a reskinned entryway from Doom 2. And along the way, you'll be killing lots and lots of enemies, and thankfully, there's quite a few guns to play around with. You start off with a pistol, which is pretty piss weak, but you can aim down the sights to be more accurate, which is handy for those all-important headshots against zombies. At some point, you get an MP40, which takes up the same weapon slot as the pistol, but it does a bit more damage and has a higher firing rate. It is a bit odd, though, seeing a weapon from the Second World War in this game, but look, let's just roll with it. Next up, you've got a few shotguns. You've got a basic pump action, then there's a super shotgun which can fire both barrels at once for maximum damage, or a single barrel at a time with the alt fire. The other shotgun's like a stronger pump action with a bayonet on the end that seems to be entirely cosmetic. But this thing can hold 10 shells before reloading instead of the regular shotgun's 8. It also has a pretty fast fire rate and does way more damage, so this is the one to use. Though like the others, it takes a while to reload, and annoyingly you have to hold down the R button until it's fully loaded. Honestly, you're just better off with one of the automatic weapons. And in the mod, they've got four of these. First, you've got an Uzi, then there's an AK-47, what I think is an AR-15, but let's just call it an assault rifle. Then finally, a Scar. These weapons are definitely the most effective in the mod and can remove a zombie's head from its shoulders with relative ease. I just think it's annoying how they all use the same weapon slot, which means you have to press 4 on your keyboard multiple times to switch through them. They also lack alternate fire modes and all the alternate fire button does is let you aim down the sights. But for dealing with droves of zombies, this is your best option. Next up, there's an RPG, and later on you'll find a 4 barreled rocket launcher like the one that Arnie uses in Commando. This thing isn't found until one of the last levels in the mod though, but being able to fire four rockets before reloading is a huge advantage. After that, there's a flamethrower, which is really good against zombies and almost anything that doesn't attack you from long range. Thing is though, it burns through fuel really quickly, and ammo is about as common as a speedrunner who wears deodorant. Finally, there's a sniper rifle, but there's not much use for this thing because combat almost always takes place at medium to close range. It's useful occasionally, but not all that much. Right near the end of the game, you'll find a minigun too, which isn't as fun as it should have been. Mostly because this thing takes longer to wind up than your mum does on a Sunday morning, and it doesn't really seem to do all that much more damage than the other automatic weapons. It is useful though because you don't have to reload it, and it does still kill zombies in a single hit with a well-placed headshot. But this thing should be buffed up a hell of a lot more.
They say the best defense is an offense, and this best describes the mines, which you can throw down on the ground to ward off advancing enemies. Again though, a pretty cool weapon, but kind of situational. Other than that, you can use the bow that the skeletons drop, which is about as damaging as a hot fart. And you can also get an iron sword, which really only feels like it's been added in to keep up appearances. The iron sword can decapitate zombies with a single swing with its alternate attack, but then again, so can a shot from any of your ranged weapons. And you don't have to be standing neck and neck with a zombie with that thing. Instead of grenades, you can throw these little bundles of TNT, which explode after a few seconds. I kind of wish these things would explode on impact, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. I also was going to say that it does feel weird using iron sights, but then again that's been a bit of a staple of the other Brutal mods, like Brutal Doom and Project Brutality, so it does kind of fit in with the theme of the whole thing. All up, I think the weapons are pretty fun to use. There's always a decent amount of ammo around, so you never really run dry, and coming across new weapons is kind of exciting. As you'd expect too, the mod is pretty damn gory, with the amount of blood decals being dialed up to 11. You've also got to deal with the player's hunger level and make sure you're eating food at regular intervals so you don't starve to death. So all up, it's done a really good job of carrying over all of those mechanics and items from Minecraft into the Doom engine, making the environments feel like they've been taken right out of the original game, which technically they have. The problem is that the mod is often unbalanced as fuck. And enemy behavior and damage output is just wildly inconsistent. Enemies are either a complete joke and offer up no real threat, or they're able to kill you in a matter of hits. Like these little firebug things here that can kill you literally within one or two seconds. The main problem without a doubt though here is the creepers. The way they've been worked into this mod, it honestly almost ruins the whole thing at times. In case you're not familiar with these creatures, there were enemies in Minecraft that snuck up behind you and exploded. In a game about building stuff, it was a perfect enemy type, able to destroy your hard-earned work, but also the fact that they made no sound meant they were great at sneaking up on you when you had your back turned. In this mod, these things are almost always put in tight places where you don't expect it, like around corners when you enter a small room. And unlike the original Minecraft, there's no timer before they explode. They just run right up to you and detonate instantly. In fact, sometimes they almost leap across the goddamn room to get you. Now, it's kind of lame for two reasons. Firstly, it forces you to save scum because you never know when they're going to throw another one at you. But secondly, it's lame because it kind of slows down the gameplay, forcing you to take things a lot more slowly and check every single corner, which isn't fun. Like, check out this bit here. I know there's a creeper in there because he's already killed me once. So I have to try to, like, lure him out, which I managed to do out of sheer luck. I mean, man, that was close. But then I see there's another five waiting for me in the next room. This kind of thing happens all throughout the mod, and I think it's the single biggest problem it has. I think the fact they're pretty much the only thing that kills me shows they need to be reworked. The other thing is that I think Brutal Minecraft kind of overstays its welcome. Like, this really is a surprisingly long mod for what it is. The campaign, if you can call it that, is probably going to take around three or so hours, if not more to get through. Probably longer if you really take your time exploring and trying to find all the secrets. And once that novelty of playing through a Minecraft world in the Doom Engine starts to wear off, you'll quickly become aware of just how tedious it is, taking on yet another group of a dozen or so enemies. Enemies often come out of monster closets when you flip a switch or get to a certain point, and you then just spend a few minutes defending your position and whittling down their numbers. After you've done this a couple of dozen times, it really starts to feel like a chore. You just start to run through these motions of finding a good place to circle strafe or bottleneck enemies while you keep your crosshair at head level, and then you just cap anything that comes your way. Often you'll die to a creeper during these segments, as these pricks are often thrown in with the normal enemies for shits and giggles. By the end of the mod, you've also got so many weapons that swapping through them becomes kind of finicky. It'd honestly be improved with some kind of weapon wheel or something to make selecting a specific gun faster. These aren't game-breaking issues, but it's just the kind of thing that reminds you you're playing a Minecraft mod for Doom. Kind of feels like something a 15-year-old kid made during his school holidays. And I'm fine with that if that's the case, but it really does have that feeling of being something that's been worked on by a single person, despite its scale. 
honestly, though, look, I kind of expected to hate this mod, considering that, to the best of my knowledge, Minecraft is played mostly by kids who think that doing the floss dance substitutes for having an actual personality. But I have to say that aside from how bad some of the balancing issues are, I think overall the mod is pretty fun. There's just something fun about seeing two separate, really unrelated games coming together. You can definitely see the amount of work that's gone into this mod, just in terms of the amount of the current content. And considering it's only in beta stage, there's surely going to be a lot more added in. I'm still waiting for someone to make a brutal mod for Honey Pop, but until that happens, going around murdering the creatures of a blocky pixelated fantasy world intended for children inside the engine of one of my favourite first person shooters is a welcome substitute. And hey, it is free.